West March originally grew from the efforts of the great general Rakis to spread his religion beyond the realms of the East. Seized by the superstitions of the Zakarum faith, he drove his paladins relentlessly across the barbaric western lands, subduing the uncivilized tribes he found there. Ultimately, he became king of them all. Despite his superstitious views, Rakis ruled as a just and fair king, who was much loved by his people. He was succeeded by his son Korsik, who attempted to eradicate the barbarian tribes of the north. The line of Rakis was broken when Korsik's son Korilan died with no heirs. After Korilan's death, the crown passed to Justinian I through a somewhat convoluted interpretation of Zakharum's scripture. Thus began the Justinian dynasty. Seen as usurpers by many, the Justinians suffered nearly constant challenges to their rule. Finally, during the reign of Justinian III, a full-fledged insurrection broke out in the outlying region of Carthus. The Catullus insurrection was led by a woman known only as Tira, who claimed to be descended from the sons of Rakis. This uprising was immediately seen as a war of the common man against the nobles and their Zakarum strictures. During the very height of the conflict, Tira seized control of West March and proclaimed herself empress. Tira's newly established rule over West March did nothing to quell the civil war, which continued until she was driven mad and eventually killed by the plague. Cornelius, grandson of Justinian III and slave to the Zakarum faith, used this opening to crush the rebels once and for all and become the new king. The Zakarum church always held an unhealthy sway in West March, even after the ascension of rulers more interested in power than religion. When the true nature of the faith was finally exposed, however, it completely eroded any influence the church had over civil affairs. And rightly so, I might add. West March is currently ruled by Justinian IV. Originally thought to be a callow youth, Justinian came into his own in the years following his ascension to the throne. Rumors still abound about demonic activity surrounding his coronation. But I believe those are simply the product of overactive imaginations fueled by the ever-prevalent myths of the Zakarum. After years of my pleading, the Angiris Council has finally agreed to send me in search of Malfiel. I will not fail in this, as my master's presence is sorely needed in the High Heavens. Owing to Malfiel's growing fascination with the humans, Tyriel has suggested I begin my search on Sanctuary. I did not find Malthiel on Sanctuary, but I did find humans. Far too many of them. They murder and cheat one another while allowing their brothers to starve. If their true power is ever released, we are all doomed. They have a choice between good and evil, and they overwhelmingly choose evil. I grew disgusted by humanity during my time on Sanctuary. When at last I found Malfiel, I was not surprised to learn that he felt the same way. We will cleanse creation of the scourge that is humankind, and when we are finished, the tragic mistake of Anarius will be gone. We must do everything in our power to slow the Nephilim down, so that the collection of souls is not interrupted. It is the key to Malfiel's victory. Nephilim, I knew the greed that infects your kind would not let you pass this chest by. And now, you shall suffer for it. The angels and their monsters are killing everyone. What will they do to me when they find out what I truly am? My mother and the demon attack she survived, it's... It's all too horrible to contemplate. I am so weary. Why did you have to die, brother? I was never meant to be king. The nobles threaten revolt to bend me to their will. They will abandon me if I don't keep the peasants in their place. Oh, my position is hopeless. I have come to realize that my personal feelings are of no consequence. My people are dying, and they need their king. Our resistance starts today, and Lord Winton, of all people, has provided the means. These Reapers shall not have Westmarch. I swear my life on it. Lord Winton, we are thrilled that you have located a surviving regiment of soldiers. 
With this new force, we can turn the tide and save our city. Your disagreements with the Crown are well known, but we are glad you can put them aside in this dangerous time. Long live Westmarch! To my snivelling offspring, if you are reading this, then I am dead, and you have come to claim my fortune. Well, you still can't have it! I have set traps to stop you from even trying. So, enjoy the rest of your poor, miserable, and cowardly lives. I can hear them. The voices speak to me again. What? Death is coming? <laughs> but I can't die. I can't. I am too important to have my life just thrown away. Please, tell me how I can avoid my fate. You want me to do what? Must I? Oh, yes. Yes, I will. I swear it. I will do anything. I have uncovered an obscure and ancient tome in whose pages is recorded an impossible tale. The secret history of a race called the Nephilim, gods by another name, and their ruined civilization in the West. If this is true, how could all signs of these Nephilim be lost but for the record of this single tome? The Nephilim were not gods, but our own ancestors, gifted with long life, magic, and abilities far beyond ours. Yet they were still men. I, I wonder if these pages hold the key to unlock their powers once again. I will bring the light of Zacharum to the heathens. Here in the east the power of Zacharum wanes, but in the west it will rise, stronger and greater than ever. Yet I have another purpose. The lost Nephilim city of Corvus lies in the west. I will find it. We founded a settlement near the western sea. It will grow to be a great city in time. Now that my people are settled, I can begin my own search for the ruins of the Nephilim city, Corvus. The tome implied that it was near this very region. We have begun searching the marsh for the ruins of Corvus. This stinking, festering swamp is punctuated by worn blocks of stone. Perhaps these ancient sentinels are all that remain of the proud Nephilim city. No, there is more to be found. I know it. Last night, I found the ruined Nephilim city. When I stepped into the buried catacombs, I felt a stirring in my blood. And then a wondrous thing. A dim light began to glow all around me not cast by any torch. It was as though the very stones acknowledged my presence. The Nephilim had such a strong connection to the light that it granted them powers far beyond our own. But I believe that through the light they can be reborn in us. Thus I have consecrated Westmarch, a shining beacon in the West. I have taken for my sigil the Wolf of Corvus and proclaimed myself King. A decade later, the power of the Nephilim still escapes me. Something long ago stole it from them and keeps it hidden, even today. I have found mention of an artifact called the Worldstone, hidden in the barbarian lands. Now that my son is born, I have rallied my banners to ride to war against them. Years on, the barbarians remain unconquered, and I am a man grown old and frail. My life has seen the founding of Westmarch and the discovery of the Nephilim ruins, but still the deeper secrets elude me. I leave the task to my son, in whose blood shall carry forth the line of Nephilim kings. The first time I saw a witch, she burned. Father took me to the town square to see it. Look, he said, that is the face of evil. But she looked like any other woman, and burned like anything else. Then the flames engulfed her. Her eyes found mine, and she laughed. My father could never understand. He was born into privilege and wealth, and he spent every moment of his life trying to protect it. I was his flesh and blood, but he cared more about the names in books and the faces of the paintings on the walls than his living daughter. Do you know what fear is? The fear of who you are. 
the fear of what your own blood would do if they knew what you were. No, you could never understand it. People look to you as a savior. Have you ever thought about the lives you've taken? They were fathers, lovers, daughters. They asked me what I see when I look into the fire. I see a burning man. I see a burning witch. I see terror and a hunger that will consume everything. What hope do the works of men have against such all-consuming hunger? I gave myself to the flames. My father burned. He screamed as the flames consumed him, and the smell was sickly sweet. He had found me. For once in his life he had noticed me, and when he saw that the flames did not touch me, he breathed one word. It was his last. Witch, they called me, but I turned it against them. When their daughter had a child that needed to disappear, when there was a sickness that none of the healers could cure, who was it they pleaded with when they needed me? The morality they flaunted in the daylight disappeared, as it always does. The first time I heard him, his voice pierced my skull. It reminded me of the cold and haughty sound of my father, but it was more. A crush of thousands of voices. When I heard him, I saw the flame, and I knew fear. It was a man who came to my bed that night, but when I looked into his eyes, I saw the other, though even he did not know at the time. I did not hear the man's voice, no. I heard the other, the one that has been with me for all these years. I gave myself to him. Leah was never my daughter. She was Diablo's daughter in truth. I felt blessed to have given the product of my body to my master. He had no interest in me, but in the product of my womb he found life again. I never flinched when I knew her purpose. Daughters are a cheap thing. I curse you, Saul! You sold me this piece of waterlogged land to build my castle on! Well, I will have the last laugh, you dog! I will build my castle here, and it will be the grandest castle ever! Do you hear me, Saul? Ever! We are fighting a battle that was lost before it had even begun. To follow the Black King into a war against Westmarch was folly of the highest order. Each day only brings us closer to complete and utter defeat, but our commanders refuse to surrender. It is decided. We will flee this doomed war. I had hoped to find solace in this decision, but it brings only more uncertainty. We will never see our homes again, and our names will be dishonored. But what choice do we have? Certain death in the service of a madman? We found what was left of Roston yesterday. The wretched creatures of the Borg seized us without warning. We are being punished by the gods. I would laugh if I had the energy. We fled the war to save ourselves, but it seems death already knew our names. This cave has killed even more of us than the Borg we thought to escape. We must leave at once. But to where? The only choice left to us is where to die. We are men without a country, shamed and cursed for fleeing an unjust war. We should have stayed and died with our honor intact. Instead, we are slaughtered like pigs by beasts that feed on our remains. Death on the battlefield would have been far better than the fate we have chosen. Diablo will return. I have done what I can to ensure it. He always finds a way. In your heart of hearts, you know this. They call me a hero. I slew demons beyond count. I won battles and broke sieges, but it availed me nothing. I know that this war can have no victor, only an eternity of revenge, pride, and hatred. Tyriel does not understand. He cannot see beyond the glory of battle. In time he may, but that day is not yet here. There must be others who seek a way out of the endless strife. 
angels and demons who feel enslaved by our fate. I cannot be unique in all of creation. I know my path. I will find those disillusioned of the war and lead them. I was struck down in the third charge. I lay upon the ground, only to wake in chains. I did not know that demons took prisoners. I babbled like a fool about my dreams of escaping this war. My captor freed me and said that we would meet again. Her name was Lilith, daughter of Mephisto. Lilith is me, but a fire and flame. I could never have felt this way about a demon while I was mired in the endless war. The strain holds us prisoner to what we've been told to believe. She and I have made plans. We will bring others to our cause, and together we will escape. Those who follow us are strong in purpose and conviction, but we are only few. Yet if we can obtain the power of the World Stone, it will be enough. We will scale the wind shear slope, steal into the heart of the fortress, and be gone before anyone notices the stone's disappearance. Can I truly love a demon? When I gave the world stone to Lilith, I knew I'd been right to seek her all along. We have created a new world. We can live here in peace, away from war. I have named this world Sanctuary. When I see Lilith sleeping at my side, I'm filled with dark thoughts. My sins are real, and I will surely pay for them. We live in peace for now, but it cannot last. They will come for me. But what of my great deeds? When I'm in torment, who will celebrate those? Who will remember Inarius? My father is content to fight the same battles and the same foes while everything turns to ashes. Though his victories might last a day, or a year, or a hundred years, the war will never be won so long as he and his brothers lead. There is an end to it, but fools like my father are too blind to see it. I took a prisoner in the battle, an angel whose light was dimming. I brought him to my lair for my amusement. But he surprised me. My touch seemed to breathe life into him. He raved like a madman about how he wished to escape the war. Perhaps I have found someone I can use. The angel I captured, Inarius, is in love with me. I can feel the intensity of his desire. I told him that we must liberate the World Stone, and then we can be together. We will create something never imagined by those mired in the eternal conflict. A new world. Inarius and I stole the World Stone, and now we have a group of renegades to follow us. I have created a new world where we can live in peace. A place of infinite possibilities. Inarius believes that escape is enough. In time, I will show him that even victory is possible. But first... I will give him children. Cursed am I to lead an army of the blind. They do not perceive that the angels are fleeing this realm, and the ones they find are merely trapped or lost. A great change is upon us. Withdraw from the fields, my brothers. Some battles can only be won with words. Enough of your idle speculation, Mephisto. I breached the fortress and saw it firsthand. The World Stone is gone. The angels I killed knew nothing about it. But since you are so perceptive, maybe you remember who else has been missing. Lilith. We must find her. Rip her limb from limb. Take the World Stone back. You are all deceived, my brothers. A new age has already begun. Can you not sense them? Ugly creatures born in shadow. They feel terror, hatred, and the desire to destroy. Yes, but they are not ours yet. They will open their world to us very soon. An invitation we cannot refuse. Pandemonium is the Alpha and the Omega of the Eternal Conflict. 
It lies at the center of all things, linking the realms of heaven and hell. Long ago, when the angels were young, the aspect of wisdom found the eye of Anu here. He named it the World Stone, and all of heaven swore to protect it. Pandemonium was destined to be our battlefield. It was formed in the chaos of the last struggle between the diamond warrior Anu and the dragon Tathamet. Now eons of war have scarred every patch of ground. The cycle of victory and defeat is the foundation of our existence and the essence of the eternal conflict. As war raged through Pandemonium, the aspect of justice called for a fortress to be raised around the World Stone. We built a shining citadel, but in time it fell to the demons. It has since changed hands countless times, becoming a patchwork of angelic and demonic expression. The Pandemonium Fortress housed the World Stone for many years, until the angel Enarius and the demon Lilith stole it away. With its loss, there was nothing left to fight for, and the fortress has been abandoned since. Our time in this land has drawn to an end. For now. Something now inhabits the fortress. I am certain of it. Long have I gazed upon its scarred facade, dreaming of the safe haven its walls offer. But it has changed. The vacant terraces have turned cold. I am so desperate to escape the demons. But whatever is in the fortress may be worse. The Great Weapon was created in response to a siege on the Pandemonium Fortress by Kurikos, a demon lord who rode a monstrous siege beast. At great cost to ourselves, we channeled much energy into the Great Weapon, and succeeded in bringing down Kurikos and his mount. Upon his death, the demon was drawn inexplicably into the weapon, and it has been attacking us ever since. When I look upon our weakened offspring, I'm filled with rage, killing them is a mercy. But one I have been unable to extend to myself. I must seek another to do what I cannot, before the endless days drive me to madness. I heard a sound and did not know what it was. I sought wisdom in the chalice, but there was none. The sounds called to me and I knew them. Human souls. to sanctuary where humans dwell but the souls did not call me from that place i searched the breath of creation always following the sound always the sound and then i understood pandemonium where the world stone once rested Smile. 
must be eliminated before they grow too strong. The Soul Stone is the perfect weapon. The eternal conflict will end. Malfail is fundamentally altering the Black Soul Stone. It will now pull in all the demonic essence from whatever plane of existence it finds itself in. But mankind is born of angel and demon alike. Every mortal, save myself, has demonic essence as an intrinsic part of their being. Losing that will rip their body and soul apart. The day of reckoning is at hand. We will rise from the ashes of Westmarch and lead mankind into the light. We shall have recruits by the thousands. Every citizen will be another Templar added to the cause. Once cleansed by the Inquisitors, they will become an unstoppable force. Man is a flawed being. Time and again we have seen good men given to temptation. Though it is painful, I have found only one answer. We must cleanse the minds of our recruits, so they will never fall prey to the corruption of the demons, or the blind self-righteousness of the angels. The prophet said I would not dream, but I did. At first they were dreams of color, unsettling, and then I began to hear voices. They called for me, over and over, and then... I walk. The Prophet asked each of us in turn before he cast the spell of binding, our lives for hers. If we declined we could leave without any thought of shame. We each heard the question, and answered the only way we could. Our cause was too important to not make that sacrifice. We trained, believing that we would fight together, but Irena was the one who was chosen. And we were the ones who must sacrifice to support her. Why her and not me? A selfish question for her. I know that if she was asked, she would say yes. So I did. <laughs>